Whether we talk about Christianity or Islam or traditional religion or, you know, whatever you call it, Eastern religion, New Age, whatever religion that seek or that, that professes to be concerned about people's life here and that, but it's not really concerned about the real issues of their life, is a moribund religion just awaiting burial. This is the philosophy that undergirds all that I do and all that we do as, as a church. And I believe it should be the same. Uh, because the man who said this, uh, many people today don't know that he happened to be a reverend gentleman. But he led uh, a revolution. He led a reform that has led the United States to where they are today in racial reconciliation. And today, in this part of the world, Racial reconciliation is not a big issue for us. We're talking about poverty. That's a big issue for us. We're talking about um, how we're going to cope with the growth in our population. We're talking about how we're going to meet the infrastructural deficit. We're talking about practical developmental issues. Those are the big deal for us today, how the economy is going to get better. Nigeria, as we all know, is bottom heavy. Uh, maybe about 65% of us are below uh, uh, 35 or 30. 65% of Nigerians, I'm in my mid 40s, so I'm not in that bracket, <laughs> you know, are, are below a particular age. And that speaks volume for the future of our country. Now, a lot of these people we're talking about have one religious affiliation or the other. As Africans, we're a very religious people. And we're not going to change overnight. So we're going to remain religious for a long time. In the midst of our religiosity, we have a burden on us to develop Africa. So there has to be a connection. The robber must meet the road. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying today. There has to be a connection. And that connection is how do we break the gap? Because in religion, we talk about intangibles. We talk about spiritual stuff. But we have to be careful that we are not raising a set of people who are heavenly conscious and earthly useless. Who are only thinking about going to heaven, but are not thinking about how we're going to power this nation. They're not thinking about the degradation uh, uh, in our world today and how we're going to preserve this continent. How we're going to preserve, you know, the earth. Because in the midst of going to heaven, if the earth is going down the drain, it's going to affect all of us. Climate change is a big issue. We're in the fourth industrial revolution. As Africans, we have not played very well. Even in the first revolution, which is agricultural, uh, where we were left behind, let me put it that way. In the second revolution, which is industrial revolution, we, 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 we don't have much to show for it. Most of our industries are packed, you know, packed, I mean, they're they packed up. In the information revolution, we were not in the front burner. Yeah. Now, in this fourth revolution, we were talking about Internet of Things, big data, you know, robotics and all. I think it's a big opportunity for us to leapfrog and get up there. And religious institutions have a lot to do. Let me suggest a few things. We have, I mean, in, uh, as a pastor, we have uh, maybe about five locations here in, in, in Lagos. The, the place where I pastor in Lekki, on a Sunday morning, we gather in our junior church about 2,000 kids. And I tell myself all the time, these 2,000 kids, if we can let them know, put a bit into the Bible teaching that we teach them about climate change, we put a bit into the fourth industrial revolution and how they, they need to think and appreciate it and the fact that if they don't wake up to it, there will be no job Yeah, by the time they grow up. We're going to raise an army of people who are learning about God, who are not robbed of their religious heritage, but at the same time, they remain relevant in their world. Whether it's in the church or in the mosque or any other religion that we affiliate ourselves with, 
we must always ask ourselves, we can't be this religious and we're pro I mean, producing the, the, the most poor people in the world. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not working. Yeah. Like young people to, will say, it's not working. Yeah. Go work, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not working. Uh, something has to be done differently. And that's for us to wake up, tell ourselves the own truth. One of, I mean, let me, let me end on this. In the second, in, uh, second revolution, which is the Industrial Revolution, when you study uh, what Max Weber alluded to in his, um, his thesis on um, the Protestant work ethics. I mean, when you hear the Protestant work ethic, and it's a, it's a big discussion uh, um, in the, the, the Industrial Revolution and capitalism, when you study that, the Protestants are a group of people, Christians, who, you know, through Martin Luther, led the Catholic Church, and their work ethic changed or enhanced the revolution that was coming up and took capitalism to a new level. So the, the allusion of Max Weber was that the Protestant work ethic was what institutionalized capitalism. So if we are this religious and when we get to work, God is no longer there, so we can steal. When we get to work, God is no longer there and we can do a shoddy job. When we get to school, God is no longer there, so if we don't study, we can still pass exam. There's a gap. And it's something that we all have to take responsibility for because this fourth revolution, we must not miss out on it.